Hi, I'm Dr. Tanya here with Tuesday's tips to keep your family healthy and safe. Today we are talking about pandemic pods, learning pods, groups of students or parents getting their kids together to form a learning environment during the pandemic. There are ways to do it safely, but there's also ways that, you know, could be potentially concerning. So that's what we're going to talk about today. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do. And I know that many of you are turning in to once again talk more about what's going on in our country with the pandemic and things that you can do to help keep your family safe and help your kids, especially as we are starting the beginning of the school year in many school districts and states and counties across the United States. So the pandemic has closed many schools or at least switched it from in-person to online. So many of you are gonna be experiencing virtual learning um, depending on where you live throughout the country, especially in areas where numbers and cases of COVID-19 are high. Also, many of you may be opting to keep your kids out of school situations because it may seem safer to you and your family. So I've been having a lot of parents say to me, you know, we are going to be forming pods, learning pods, small homeschooling groups, classes, either because we feel it's safer to have kids in smaller environments and smaller groups where we can keep an eye on them. Um, in some cases, families are hiring a teacher to teach um, a few kids or a small group of kids in their home. In other cases, parents are supervising groups of kids that will be learning online virtually through their local school program. And this may be because some of the parents work and need a different adult to supervise their kids or simply because they want social interaction for their children. And sometimes it's more fun to be in a group. Other families are looking for um, other opportunities for their children and many temples, churches, and community centers around the country are opening up and saying, hey, we understand that you parents may need to work, may need a safe place for your child to be during the day. Why don't you come here and we will have daycare for them, no matter what the age is. So this can even be for elementary school, middle school, and high school kids, where they have a safe, clean environment to learn online with an adult who can help them. And these are all options that families are exploring around the country. And there isn't any one size fits all solution. And there isn't a right answer or a wrong answer. You know, as a pediatrician, especially one that's working closely with many schools throughout the country, um, my concern is that many of these environments may not be as safe as putting your kids back in traditional school where I have reviewed many of the safety plans and they are following the CDC guidance, the American and County Pediat Pediatrics guidance, and the guidance from your local state and county. So what I want to talk to you about today is how you can make your learning pods, your online home groups, homeschooling groups, or community groups as safe as what is recommended. Because we understand that you want to do what's best for your family. And for some families, this may be a safe and the best option. And that's okay, as long as you do it safely. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. So principles for virtual learning pods or creative learning situations that you may be coming up with for your family. So the same three principles apply, whether you're having kids in your home, whether you're going to be rotating homes, whether you're going to be dropping your kids off in another location, whether it is an organized school through your county, an independent school, or even a community center that's opening up their doors to say, hey, we can help care for your kids during the day since there aren't very many other options available. So the three principles, no matter what you are doing with your family this coming school year, are the first, they have to be able to demonstrate that they can decrease viral entry onto their campus, into their home, or into that environment. So that means ways to decrease bringing COVID-19 into a setting where multiple students or children will be, and potentially even your kids. So things that you want to do is make sure that you choose the families wisely that you're going to be grouping together with 
and choose the location wisely. So you want to look for a location that has a good amount of ventilation, um, larger rooms where kids can be distanced, maybe places where um, much of the day can be outdoors. I've been seeing a lot of outdoor pod virtual learning and school um, being set up around the country. Um, in some cases, families are getting together and having outdoor school, and that could be a great option. So look for places where there are more outdoor opportunities available. You wanna make sure that everybody involved takes a health pact or pledge. So that means you all get together and talk about how you are all part of the same community. And you are only as strong as your weakest link. So everybody needs to agree to follow the same rules and to not socialize out of your group, to, um, to stay distanced, to wear masks, when you're out and about, and if you have a concern that you could have been potentially exposed, that you will let everybody in your group know. You have to be honest and open with each other for this type of situation to work, especially in the environment that we are in right now with COVID-19 cases increasing throughout our country and throughout many communities. You also wanna have strict screening policies in place. So that way families know before they show up, whether it's at your house, or another home, or even a community center or a school, that everybody is going to have to answer the same questions. And those questions are gonna be, have you or anyone in your immediate household been diagnosed or tested positive for COVID-19? Or been exposed to anyone who has been diagnosed with or tested positive for COVID-19? That's question one. The second question should be, have you or anyone in your immediate household had any of the following symptoms of COVID-19 within the last few days? And that can range from fevers to rashes to trouble breathing to cough to fatigue to stomach aches. And you can come up with your own list and there are many lists available online. Check out the CDC website and you can see comprehensive lists of all of the signs and symptoms of COVID-19 that you want to be asking about. The other thing is that um, you also want to make sure that everybody knows what your sick protocols are going to be. So if they or anyone in their home has been sick even a week ago, do they need to be tested for COVID-19? When can they return? And you want to make sure that these are things that everybody agrees on. That way there aren't any questions. The second big item, the second um, big strategy that you need is how are you going to decrease transmission amongst your group? And just because you're not in a large school setting, this is still very important because you want to make sure that if anybody is potentially asymptomatic or presymptomatic, that it can't be transmitted amongst your pod. So this means that everybody needs to agree to wear a mask. And I have to tell you that kids over age two are wearing masks very well. I've been surprised my five-year-old was in a summer program. I was worried he wouldn't wear a mask. He wore it all day long. He forgot it was on his face. He still recognized his friends. He still had fun. He still learned. And he still spent time outdoors all while wearing his mask. You also want to make sure that the kids are set up in a distance fashion. So that means they're at least six feet apart when they are being taught by a teacher in your home, in your backyard, or they're sitting with their laptops or virtual learning devices. Now, if they can't be six feet apart, there are other options such as masks with maybe plexiglass or physical dividers. Also good airflow can help but really six feet is what's currently recommended by the CDC and the WHO is recommending three feet with a mask. And depending on your state guidelines, there may be other three to six feet guidance there. But again, as far apart as possible is really best to decrease transmission. You also wanna make sure that everybody has plenty of time outdoors. Now, when you're outdoors though, it's still important to wear a mask and to distance. And during times where you can't wear masks, such as when you are eating lunch, then it's actually very important that you are six feet or even more farther apart, that you're outdoors, that there are barriers between you, because this is when the highest risk time is that the disease can be transmitted. And I have to say, it's actually more important for the adults, for the teachers, for the adults who are supervising the kids to be at a distance, especially when they're eating, because I am more concerned about transmission from adults and between adults than I am with the young children. You also wanna make sure that everybody has hand washing protocols. So every hour they are washing their hands, they are sanitizing their hands, that everything is getting properly disinfected on a regular routine. 
and also again proper ventilation um, and you can leave the doors and windows open you can ramp up your air conditioning systems um, many of the schools are recommending um, what's called MERV 13 or greater at least three air exchanges per 15 minutes like we do in many medical settings and again I'm not an HVAC um, expert, so talk to your HVAC expert, but those are other things you want to consider, especially if you are hosting a virtual learning pod in your home. The third most important thing is how are you going to diagnose cases? How are you going to test? How are you going to know when to isolate, when to quarantine, and contact trace? And this is something where you may need to involve a local pediatrician, perhaps the pediatricians of the children who are going to be learning with your kids. Um, because if somebody is sick, and it will happen, you are going to have somebody get sick. It may or may not be COVID, but you are going to have fevers. You are going to have illnesses. Even this summer, most of the infections that I've seen in kids have not been COVID, but we need to be able to rapidly test because we need to be able to tell everybody that's around you in your cohort have you been potentially exposed? Do you need to go home and quarantine? Do you need to get tested? And so you're gonna have to have a setup there so that way you can, you can figure this out. And like I said, enlist your local pediatricians. Let them know that you're gonna need rapid testing and identification of COVID. You're gonna need strict policies. And if you look at the CDC website, it's very clearly outlined when you can return to school if you've been sick, if you've been exposed, with or without a COVID-19 test. So I would follow the recommendations on the CDC website or the American Academy of Pediatrics website or ask your own local state, your local county, and your pediatrician for guidance on all of these matters. But it is very important that when you are looking for safe places for your kids to be this school year, whether it is learning at home with a tutor, in your backyard, with a few friends, a few classmates, or if you're taking your child to some other location, it's very important that all of these health and safety protocols are followed. Because otherwise, why are we even closing schools? If everybody's gonna get together anyway in unsafe environments, then that's not really gonna help anybody in our community, in our society, and the numbers are gonna keep going up. So we all have to follow the same rules and we all have to do this together. And again, there's no one size fits all solution when it comes to your kids and their education this school year. So as a parent, you are allowed to make decisions for your own family. You are allowed to choose what you feel most comfortable with and what you think is best for your child's education. And that could be in-person school. It could be virtual school. It could be a hybrid approach. It could be getting kids together in a learning pod and that's fine. Just please make sure you are doing it safely. And if you have any questions about what the best ways are to do it safely, please reach out, ask questions here and I will answer them. Ask your own pediatrician. And it's always a good idea to look at your own county guidance, your state guidance, and don't forget the American Academy of Pediatrics and the Center for Disease Control. Because what we want is we want all kids throughout the country to be safe. We want teachers and adults to also be safe. And yet we want everyone to have a learning environment where they can thrive and be enriched and be successful. Because what we don't wanna have after this pandemic year is up is a huge gap in learning across our country. That, that won't help anybody and it may even hurt so many. So we all need to work together to help each other through this challenging time. With that, I wish you all a safe and healthy week. Please stay home when possible, wear a mask, wash your hands, keep a safe distance apart as these are the best things we can do to help turn this pandemic around and keep all of us safe.